Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today we are beginning here in my car. That's right, um, we're out in the world today, out on an adventure. I think I will bring you along on my day of thrifting and antiquing. Today I decided, um, this is a Saturday, and Saturday is the 50% off days at the thrift store, so it's the day I like to go the best. And I decided this week, I've just been having a little bit of a rough brain week for the last while. Um, and one of the things that gets me out of my head and does bring brings me sparks joy is going uh, thrifting and trying to find cool things out here in the wild. So I thought today I would bring you along with me on my thrifting adventures. So I'm going to be going into, there's an art thrift store over there behind me. Um, and so I'm going to be going into there first, and then I might hit up the local, um, one of my favorite antique malls, maybe some other antique stores if I come across any, and then possibly my other favorite ARC thrift store. Um, this one's a little bit farther away from me. I drove over here because I do usually have luck at this one. So let's see if there is more luck today, shall we? Yes, that's right. This is what my thrift shops look like where I go thrifting. Um, of course, thrifting is like mining for treasure. There's a lot of nothing um, and, you know, j j junk. Um, and then every once in a while there's a gem. So you got to go in sort of patient, hydrated, and then like stay vigilant. Uh, I go through each rack and like kind of each item individually, but quickly. Um, and I'm just looking for anything that's silk or linen or wool, rayon, nicer fabrics. And then anything that I like that I notice is one of those fabrics, a good textile, I'll pull it off the rack. And if it's nice, it goes into my cart basically. And then I'll just do a full inspection of things again before I head into the fitting room or on this day, if it's busy like this, while I'm waiting for a fitting room. Um, and just make, check everything over, make sure there's not any um, major damage or stains, things like that. Um, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a battle at the thrift store. It's a battle, but sometimes it's a battle where you can find silk and um, that's important to me. So just toss things in the cart once I find silk blouses basically. And uh, then I waited in this a very, very long line that you can't see here to get up to the checkout counter because it was quite busy in here. Oof. I think my bangs can tell you the story of how harrowing that was. Whew. Uh, it's a busy day at the Ark. I didn't get much footage inside because it was just really quite crowded and there were children screaming and it's one of those kind of thrifting experiences. I didn't actually find much of this one. Usually this one I have a good amount of success. They ha you tend to have a lot of 80s things, which is good in my case. At the Ark on Saturdays, like all the different colors of tags are on sale except for like one color. And I kept finding all the things that were the one color that was not on sale. So I got a couple of things to put in the shop and I got something for myself that were like full price, unfortunately. Um, but they, I thought they were worth it. So um, paid the full $7 and things like that for some stuff. But that's all right. Hopefully I'll have better luck at the next arc. I think I might actually go to a really super cute local little coffee shop over here. So I'll jump to that. I was kidding about the cute coffee shop. I don't know anything around here, but I have got myself some pumpkin bread for a snack and a coffee before we head on to the next spot. I think I might go to the antique mall next. Maybe the thrift store. Oh, I don't know. If I go to the antique mall first, I'll be there a couple hours. So maybe I'll go to the thrift store first and then we'll go to the antique mall. Sound like a plan? Um, for those of you wondering why my makeup is less than uh, super exciting like it normally would be maybe, or I like to think it is, uh, I don't wear red lipstick on days I know I'm gonna be trying on clothes because I'm just gonna be pulling clothes off and off off and on my over my head and so my hair is gonna get messed up so I haven't done my hair today and my makeup could get on the clothes so I just don't wear red lipstick on days when I'm gonna be trying things on. Great point. There's not a flattering angle going on here. Nope. <laughs> That's as good as it's gonna get. Ugh. Um, so that one actually was a total dud. I found two skirts for my shop, but that's it. Everything else, there wasn't really anything exciting going on. Um, I'm always looking at, um, coats at this time of season. They kind of take away all of the shirts. They leave like one rack of long sleeve shirts. I don't know what it is about ARC that they think that blouses are like a seasonal item, um, that people like switch completely only to sweaters in the winter, but they put out like six racks of like polyester chenille sweaters from Kohl's. 
and they take away all the shirts and blouses, which is a real disappointment to me. So that's a bummer. So the main thing I'm looking for right now is coats because you can get such a good deal on like heavy wool coats at the thrift store. And sure you have to dry clean them and like dry cleaning for something like that can be 12, $20 if it's like a huge wool coat, but it's still a really good deal if you get the coat for like five bucks and you spend $20 on dry cleaning, it's still a really good deal for a nice quality wool coat in which I did pick one up today. So I'll show you that later in this video. But uh, this last thrift store, unfortunately, pretty much a dud, not much going on there other than a lot of unfortunate sweaters. So instead we're gonna go poke around the antique mall for a little bit here instead. So when it comes to the antique mall, it's like a different kind of treasure hunt because there's a lot of treasure, a lot of, uh, you know, junk. And uh, the key is zeroing in on what you are actually after while also still being able to enjoy looking at the other like random surprise stuff, um, especially for me because there's a lot of housewares and I really don't, I have, don't have a house, so I can't buy any of it, but I still do enjoy looking at glassware and vases and framed pictures and things like that. So I try and still enjoy myself, even though there's a lot of things that are kind of off access to me, um, or I can't have no use for them yet, at least. America! Banjos and guns. You know, banjos and guns. Here, here's the uh, typical antique mall situation here. There's a motorcycle helmet and a framed Victorian hand fan. And over here, of course, I found a skirt, and that's why I always bring a measuring tape. I also love antique dresser, like, slash vanity stuff. So pretty. And I wanted this owl bar set that I couldn't have, because I don't have a bar. Always look through the vintage buttons, you guys. Always look through the vintage buttons. Um, also, if anyone wants to buy me this dolphin fish table for the house I don't have, feel free. Please do. Marika! So much hunting, etc. All right, so I have that skirt that I found, and I'm just walking through the aisles here. This is a cabinet of vintage jewelry, but the thing is, about vintage jewelry when you're out and about, a lot of people try and pass more modern stuff off as vintage, and it's usually just overpriced compared to online, so I stick with Etsy when it comes to vintage jewelry mostly. I mean, it's still worth a look. Here's some vintage scarves. If anyone, here, pop quiz, if anyone can tell me what these are for in the comments, you will win the non-existent prize of the day. I'll put the answer in the description. Here's some more clothes, although these were mostly 80s things and mostly very 80s 80s things as opposed to retro 80s things, which is, you know, unfortunate. Um, here's a mirror though, so I can show you what I was wearing this day. Plaid skirt, billowy top, vest. Can't go wrong. Flat shoes also. You know. Some more vintage handbags here. Again, probably cheaper online, honestly. Uh, I, I think most things in antique malls are actually overpriced, especially like all of this jewelry over here. I wouldn't say this jewelry is particularly overpriced at this particular booth. They have a ton, obviously, as you can see, but I would say it's comparable, if not more expensive than it is online. So here was a vintage holiday coat that I quite liked. However, it's, you know, real fur and not something I collect uh, anymore or buy um, in general. Here's a really cute 30s or 40s dresser. And here's my outfit again for, you know, a little bit better look at that. Fun. So yeah, antique malls are a real adventure. I ended up just getting this yellow plaid skirt that I found this time. I wasn't expecting to find anything, so I was happy to have at least found that. And we're back here in my sewing room where we, where I'm normally filming my thrift hauls, but uh, I just, you know, wanted to try a little bit different style, take you guys along with me a little bit. Obviously it's a couple of days later here, completely different look going on. Um, actually the rest of this sewing room and the my set, my other part of my set, are actually kind of a total mess because I just finished filming the Gryffindor lookbook video, but I wanted to film the rest of this video while everything was still fresh in my mind from that day out and about. And the first item I have to show you was from that first ARC thrift store um, where I actually had most of the luck of the day, um, even though at the time I thought, oh, that didn't go very well, but it was better than any other store I went into that day, it was this blue silk and linen blend button-down shirt. It's kind of got a pretty shaped collar up here. It needs a new ironing and pressing because it's got some strange pressing marks in it, which will hopefully go away um, after I hand wash this and then iron it myself. But I just didn't have a shirt this color. It's kind of like a chambray looking, like almost denim kind of colored shirt. I didn't have anything like that in my wardrobe. I thought it would look good tied with jeans, tucked into skirts. I thought, you know, with like a brown beret and high-waisted pants, it might look a little bit Peaky Blinders if I rolled the cuffs and things. It's just me trying to dress a little bit more Peaky Blindery lately. I don't know. I'm blame watching that show. I'm only on the second season, by the way. So 
Don't think that I've binged the whole thing. I haven't, no spoilers, please. This one was $5.99. I think it was probably half off of that. And then by a brand called Tracy M, no idea who they are. It's 76% linen and 20, or 76% silk and 24% linen, which seems like an odd blend that it's not 75 and 25, but okay. Um, I, two fibers I quite like, natural fibers to have in my wardrobe, of course. And I think this will be a nice basic for me and slot into my wardrobe quite well. The first skirt I have to show you is this black wool one from Evan Picone. I don't know, know very much about that label. Um, I suppose I could do a little bit of research, but I haven't yet. Uh, but it seems like every time I run into it out in the thrift store, that the items are nice quality and good, nice textiles. So happy to have found that. Um, I did originally pull this off the rack and put it in the cart because I thought, ooh, great for the shop, a great wool basic, um, really nice skirt. But then of course I got it home and thought, you know, that might fit me. <laughs> and then I tried it on and it, and it did fit me. And I don't have a black wool full skirt. I only have a black wool pencil skirt. And this is like almost a full circle. It seems uh, quite full and it's the style I like. It has pockets, it's black wool. As we know, I have a lot of black in my wardrobe. And so I was like, hmm, that'll be staying with me. So I thought I found a good basic for the shop, but it turned out I just found a good basic for me and I'm super happy to have picked this up. And then I do have two other skirts this time, both patterned pleated rayon skirts from the 1980s. These seem to be quite a common thing for me to find. I like finding them. I try not to keep all of them. So I have had a few in the shop and I do still have a few in the shop because I find a lot of them. I really like them. And uh, if they fit me, I have a hard time not keeping them. So that's why I ended up keeping the, both of these next two. This one, I think the print is quite 80s, but I just loved the colors in it. I thought with like any of these colors in a knit sweater, it would look really pretty. Even with like my blazers and dark tones, I thought this would look nice. I have a ivory and navy blue, like 1950s suit. And I think the jacket of that would look good with this. I think my burgundy red suit jacket would look good with this. I don't know. It's a very 80s print and yet I like it anyway. And as we know, even though I'm a 40s and 50s kind of gal, I love me some 1980s. Like I like 80s when it does vintage and I like 80s all on its own sometimes too. This one was $4.99 and I actually did, these weren't, uh, this was the day where the blue was not 50% off. So I, I'm remembering now. And uh, so I did pay the full $5 for this one, but I mean, it has pockets and I can wear this in the summertime, in the wintertime. It's an all season skirt for me. So I try not to feel too bad about picking that one up. And then I did pick up a, another floral rayon, hitting myself in the face with the tag here, um, floral rayon skirt. This one is from Corit and is apparently dead stock, brand new. Um, and what's shocking to me is that this was $48 in like the eighties or nineties or whenever this was from. Um, the tag is quite yellowed with age here, um, but someone, I assume paid $48 for this rayon skirt that I got for $8. And I did pay the full $8 and I was feeling a little bit bad about that until I just saw this because, wow, what a deal I got. And like $48 back in the late 80s, I feel like that was kind of expensive, but apparently it's a nice skirt. I think it is. I really, again, love the colors here. This is like a nice dark moody, like peonies and roses, I guess. Very, very, very romantic and pretty in that kind of dark way we know I like. Um, but again, yeah, brand new also. So that's always nice when I can find dead stock out and about. The last skirt, I almost just forgot to show it to you. Um, I had to go pull it from the rack outside because I was just wearing this in my Gryffindor lookbook last week, of course, because as you can see, it works quite well for a Gryffindor lookbook being this red and gold and black plaid. This is actually a Pendleton pleated skirt. So it doesn't get much more classic than that or schoolgirl than that really. But I, um, I showed you in that clip there that I had my little measuring tape with me just because I like keeping a measuring tape with me when I'm at antique malls, antique fairs, street markets, anything like that in case there is vintage clothing and no fitting room. So I can go ahead and just measure a couple key places on the clothes and see if they're going to fit me. This one, I of course measured the waist, noticed it was about 31 inches, knew that would fit me perfectly. And of course I snapped this one up because of those Hogwarts lookbooks. I couldn't resist. Also, I just happened to like plaid pleated skirts and I didn't have a yellow one. So it was really two birds with one stone there. This one was $28. Again, that's closer to like a sort of retail sort of price because it was at a antique mall as opposed to the thrift store, thrift store pricing. As we know, I'm used to getting things for a lot cheaper um, or like really like under $10 for sure. But I was happy to pay 28 for this one just because it was something that was gonna work with my lookbooks that I had coming up so well and I knew would work in my wardrobe. And again, I do quite like yellow. So um, it, hit, it ticked a lot of boxes for me. So I was willing to pay, you know, the $28 price tag. I did end up finding another pair of fundamental things like tapered high-waisted wool trousers, which uh, if you've been here on the channel, you know I 
already have a pair from a previous thrift haul. The ones I had before have a subtle herringbone in them though, and these ones are just like a charcoal solid, well not solid, like heathered gray situation. So it's a little bit different. I think I'll actually end up be trying, um, end up trying on these ones, the new ones, and the ones I picked up in my other recent haul and seeing which ones actually fit better. Um, I'm hoping these ones are a little bit longer and then I will probably put the other pair I decide not to keep in my shop. So if you are really after a pair of pants like these, maybe message me on Instagram and I'll give you some first dibs there. But yeah, I need to try on the other ones again still and figure out which ones I'm gonna keep, but always happy to find nice wool high-waisted trousers, of course. And speaking of nice high-waisted wool trousers, I did find these nice brown tweed pants from the brand Orvis, which seems to be quite a nice brand because I found a jacket, almost like kind of a riding style jacket a little while back from them too. That one was too big for me, so I did end up selling it in the shop. So I hope you are enjoying that jacket out there, whoever you are, because um, it didn't fit me and I wished it did. Uh, but these pants, luckily for me, did fit me. I pulled them off the rack and immediately fell in love with this tweed. I'll put a close up of the rainbow fleck going on in this fabric. It kind of looks like carpet padding or if you've ever seen those confetti fleck plastic bowls from, I don't know, the 70s maybe? My grandparents had some when I was growing up and I really like those bowls. I'd love to have some someday. But it kind of reminds me of things like that. But I just love this tweed and I'm so pleased that these fit me. I was worried that they might not again. And like that just means I'll put them in the shop and I miss out. But I, I really most of the time want to keep everything, you know? So again, please these fit me instead and I got to keep them. They were uh, $5.99, so $6.00. $3 for me with the half off. Can't beat $3 for a really nice pair of fully lined wool trousers now, can you? And the last item I picked up on that day out and about at that thrift, first thrift store again was this super giant flared wool coat. It's sort of this mulberry brownish grayed out burgundy color. I don't really have a name for it. I think mulberry is probably the closest name for it, but uh, really a lovely color that I didn't have in my wardrobe. I have brown, I have black. I don't have red, sadly. I'd love to have a red coat but this is going to be satisfying my need for a warm colored coat for now, I suppose. And it will be very warm indeed, as this is a very thick wool. Luckily, it is fully lined in here. It's from a company called Paudel Fashions, whoever they were. I think this is probably like a late 70s or 80s coat. I'm just not really sure. The label looks quite 50s, which means, means I'm leaning towards 80s, oddly enough, because usually 80s labels and 50s labels can sometimes mimic one another, weirdly enough. Um, but a really nice quality, super thick wool coat with a nice full skirt like that, full sleeves on this. Super happy to have picked this one up. I'm not sure, I don't think I have the tag on it anymore, but I think this was $7. So obviously a really good deal for a thick wool coat. I seriously, like I said earlier in this video, look at the coats at the thrift stores because something like this obviously would cost probably $250 new, um, at least that to get a nice wool, thick wool coat like this now. but. At the thrift store, they're usually under $10 and you can find some really fun colors and different shapes that you might not be able to play with otherwise. So those were the items I picked up while out and about on that day I attempted to bring you with me while thrifting and antiquing. I'm sorry again that I wasn't able to film more while in the store. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to either gather more courage or a friend to help me out next time so that I can get a little bit more in-store footage for you. But thank you as always again for watching anyway and I will see you again here on the channel soon. Bye.